Hey there, and welcome to a continued dialogue about how we graph trig functions. Um, let's start from the beginning, which is a very good place to start. All right, so the amplitude, oh, forgot to say, um, we are assuming that no phase shift ha have taken place with these functions, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just put that phase shift in at zero. So let's start by um, identifying the amplitude. The amplitude is going to be the distance to the peak from the midline. So it's going to be five. And so from our, um, our parent function of y equals sine of t, we're going to add that five in. Now we want to know, does this um, sine function have a reflection or not. Now since we know that there has been no phase shift and um, we know that our parent function really goes through the origin and has a peak and then a valley, then we are going to say that there is no reflection because if there was it would have a valley first and then a peak. So no reflection. Um, now we need to identify the period and remember that the period is um, the distance on the x-axis it takes for one complete cycle. So in this case our period is 2 pi over 3 units. Now again we need to once we find the period we need to use that to solve for b. So 2 pi over b is equal to 2 pi over 3 and that means b will equal Three. So we can go ahead and add that in to our function. y is equal to 5 times the sine of 3t. And in this case, there's no vertical shift because our midline is right on the x-axis. And so we have found our function. Um, and we don't need to put the plus 0 there at the end, but our function that corresponds with this graph is y equals 5 times the sine of 3t. Here's another example, similar to the one we just did. So let's go through it a little quicker this time. How about that amplitude? Can you identify the amplitude? If you said two, you'd be right. The amplitude is the distance from the midline to the maximum. So that will be two units, and we can go ahead and add that into our function. Now we uh, want to know, does this have a reflection? And since there is no phase shift, I look at uh, the y-axis and notice that it is going down to a valley before it goes up to a peak, which means, yes, there is a reflection. So we're going to go ahead and add that negative to the coefficient of sine of t. Let's identify the period of this function. Remember the period is the distance it takes for one full cycle and that looks like it's pi over three units here. So then we will use the period to solve for b. Two pi over b is equal to pi over three and so b is equal to six. And that means that I can add that six value in as the coefficient t. Okay, we are assuming no phase shifts, and this function doesn't have a vertical shift either. Um, we know that because the midline is right on the x-axis. So uh, we can go ahead and identify our function to be y is equal to negative 2 sine of 6t. Here's another example for you. Um, okay, so this one we are looking at just one period of this function. And I, I chose this example because um, I want you to get in the habit of really being able to identify um, period, if you can't see several periods, right? You need to kind of pick out one. Uh, so let's go ahead and work through this example. Uh, the amplitude here is, a little harder to find because we don't have all the increments on the y-axis named, but we can say that um, from what we're given, we can say that this is eight units. So our amplitude is eight, and we can um, put that in the appropriate place in our function. 
Now, what do you think? Does this have a reflection? Is this reflected over the x-axis? How do we know that? Remember that we can look, since we know this has no phase shift, we can look at the y-axis and see what the behavior of the graph is directly to the right. Since it's going down into a valley first, we know that there is a reflection. So yes, there is. We need to add a negative to that coefficient. Now, how about the period here? Um, for one complete cycle, one hill plus one valley, we need to look and see how long that is, okay? And we can tell that that is six pi units long. So our period is six pi, which means we'll use that to solve for b. Two pi over b is equal to six pi, and that gives us b is equal to one third. Okay, so we can put that in the corresponding place. And again, there's no vertical shift. And so we know what our function is. So for this function, we're going to start as we have before by identifying the amplitude, whether or not there's a reflection and the period. We can assume that there is no phase shift, so we can say that that's zero. We're going to start with our parent function of y is equal to sine of t. All right, now, so now let's look at that graph and identify the amplitude. Look for the distance from the midline to the crest of a hill or to the bottom of a valley. So we can see here that the amplitude is going to be 7 units. We can utilize that. Now, knowing that our sine function starts on the x-axis with a hill and then a valley, that's exactly what we see here. So this has not had any kind of reflection. So we'll say that um, y equals 7 sine of t is going to implement the amplitude and lack of reflection. All right, so now let's go ahead and decide what's the period length. How far on the x-axis does it take us to complete one full cycle? Well, you can see that that's going to be four wow. units there. Can you see that that's one full hill and one full valley? That's the length of the period. So if we know that the uh, period length is 4, that's going to allow us to solve for b because we know that 2 pi divided by b is going to equal 4. And so that means that b will equal pi over 2. So let's go ahead and implement that into our equation. Very good. All right, now, so because our midline is right on the x-axis, there's no vertical shift, so we don't have to worry about that. So then we can go ahead and say that we've identified our function.